Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on Unity 3D and today we'll be talking about rocket engines and we're also going to be revisiting our Torque series uh, and going back on that and kind of showing you some other things we could do from the previous video on Torque. So I'm going to jump into rockets first because this is something new um, and it's probably more interesting to jump into. Um, and to start out, we're going to talk about the setup. We're going to have a game object, which is just a ship, and you can kind of see that in the background. It's not going to be exactly like that. Um, it's also going to have a rigid body with mass. Uh, it will have a collider, and it will have a ship control script. We're also going to have a game object that's an engine, and we can have multiple of these. We're going to be able to add a bunch of these because we have a list. And the engines really only consist of uh, just a, an object with a collider uh, to give it, you know, to, to help us calculate how we're going to do the physics because um, it doesn't need the mass. The mass is going to be on the rigid body. And then we're also going to have an engine script. So um, the engine script is actually really simple. You can just create a new script and it's going to be a mono behavior. And all you need to do in this case, I've given you kind of the meat of it. Um, you're just going to have a public vector three and thrust. And all we're going to take for that is a float. So we're going to sell this thrust, uh, you know, f uh, function. We're going to give it a throttle value. Now, what you don't see, what I haven't put in here is, is this max thrust. This max thrust is just a public float. We can say at max, you know, 5,000 or 3,000. But in the examples, I have put them all at 5,000. Um, but we're going to say we have a float current thrust equals our throttle times max thrust. Then we're going to return vector 3 force, and that's going to be transform.forward. So for this object, we're going to say transform.forward times current thrust. So we're going to say push, uh, the force is going to have a vector uh, times our thrust in our forward direction. And we're going to return actually a negative thrust. So the way I've done this is you know, when you think about a rocket, you see the flames shooting out the back, but the force is actually going to force it the other direction, the opposite direction of the flames. So we'll kind of jump into the um, Unity section uh, in just a minute, but let's go back into the ship movement script as well. So what we're going to do with the ship movement script, so we made this engine, the engine script here, what we're doing is saying public list engine. Uh, if you see these little brackets, that means that we're using uh, a list, of, it's a generic, and so with that generic we're saying we want this to be an engine. Um, if you're not familiar with generics, what those are is a way of saying, let's say you have like a, a variable or, or something that you want to uh, set where it could be anything, but uh, it has to be strictly adhered to once it's actually set. So uh, a list of engines, this list is never going to be anything else. Once we say it's an engine, it's going to be this, this class that we've made of engines. So this list of engines is a new list of engines. Um, then we're going to get our private rigid body and grab that. That's pretty simple stuff. Um, then we have our fixed update. And so in fixed update, this is the physics calculations, remember that. Um, we're going to say for each engine in engine. So for every engine that we add, we can make a list as large as we want to. In the editor, you can set the size. You can say two, four, six, you know, whatever number you want to. Um, and for each one of those, we're going to say float throttle equals mathf.clamp. And then we're going to say the input get axis vertical. So what we're saying is we want to get our vertical input and we're going to clamp it between zero and one. We don't want it to go less than zero because if you think about like a rocket engine, um, you can't have a negative thrust on it. It's only going to be positive. So um, each of these is going to be at minimum zero and at max one. Uh, and then depending on where it's at, we're going to uh, multiply that times our thrust on that particular engine. Um, and then what we're going to do is, here's the real critical part for the physics calculations. We're going to say on our rigid body, add force at position. And then we're going to get the engine dot thrust throttle. And then we're going to, so what we're going to get the return value of is how much we're going to thrust. And then we're going to apply that at the transform position of the engine. So wherever the engine is, we're going to apply the thrust. And so let's jump into Unity and see what that looks like real quick. So here you can see I have a setup with a little ship and here is a game object of which I have attached our space, uh, you know, our, our engine script to. Uh, so that's one component. It also has a collider um, and I'm gonna drag uh, Unity over so you guys can see this. Uh, let's close this tab. 
And you can see, so here's our ship. You can see this is, uh, I had some particle effects to make it more visible. Um, but here's our little thruster uh, with particle effects and a collider. So you can see the collider is just a capsule collider. Um, our actual ship here has a rigid body attached to it. So we're now selecting the ship. Rigid body, I gave it a mass of 5,000. Um, so these thrusters each has a max thrust on the engine script of 5,000. So if we were to play this, and let's see if I can get the, if I close the tab, I'm gonna drag the game over here. If we were to play this, then we would, you know, on this one I've given the uh, up arrow, the vertical axis of thrust, you'll see what happens here. Now on my script, I've actually added another extra function where if I press the space bar, it's gonna rotate those just a little bit. So if I were to thrust now, it's gonna change the direction a bit. And you can see, how it changes how it rotates and it's kind of going crazy right now let's see if i can stop that uh by pressing the space bar and slowing it down so you can kind of see that once we start applying thrust the uh the the fire helps to visualize what we're actually doing so when we're pressing that button we can see that it's pushing um so you can see that now we can basically in unity just add as many of these uh as many of these uh, thrusters as we want. So I'm going to disable this ship here and uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, put on another one here. Uh, call it Hexa Rock. And uh, if we play this, you can see, like if I were to boost or thrust, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to rotate these to actually show. We have all these, these six thrusters and they're all facing out. So if we do thrust here, they're all actually pushing right towards the middle and they're, they're evenly spaced you know, split so that any type of force you're putting is just squeezing on that middle there. It's actually not going to go anywhere. But if we were to like, you know, rotate these just a little bit, um, we're going to see as, as they kind of rotate it a little bit, they're going to boost up. But if we do it straight, that thrust is going to be pretty direct and it goes a whole lot faster uh, when you do when you do them straight in one direction. But anyway, like here is going to slowly slow down. But if you were to like actually move this you know, straight up, it's going to go super fast because there's six in one direction unified. So anyway, um, that's going to cover it for our thrust in the engines there. And you can see here what I've done is that list that we were talking about on the on the script. I have just dragged in each of these engines into that list. You, you know, I selected my Hexarock uh, you know, ship here and added the T1 and added the T2. Um, and so we said it's six, but we could also just say we're only going to use three and then we're going to drop that down and you'll see T1, 2, and 3 and that's all that's going to be activated. The others are just going to sit there and I guess they're going to be on the whole time because the script actually does start out with them on, but you can see that they're the only ones actually applying thrust. So the particle system is working, but the thrust system is not um, for those particular engines. So anyway, let's move on to the next part. So if you remember in my last video on torque, we had an issue that we mentioned about not having variable density with our colliders. So when you provide a mass to Unity that you want to apply a torque to, that mass for the colliders is always going to be consistent um, this density across it. So one way we can get around that is to use fixed joints and provide different masses. Um, but generally speaking, I think in most cases, you'll probably uh, just want to use either um, the standard, just having a standard density and trying to find weird ways to work around that. Um, or you might implement your own custom system where you do your own calculations. Uh, and that'd be pretty advanced to be honest with you. So I'm not gonna go over any, any of that kind of stuff personally because I haven't done the research. And in all honesty, I want to keep it kind of simple. So, um, but I'll kind of go through the setup I'm going to show you just right now. Um, we have uh, in this next setup some control cubes and some weight cubes. The control cubes are just going to be gray, and the weight cubes are going to be red or transparent red. And the transparent red ones uh, are of a lower density, uh, their mass is smaller, but their size is a little bit larger. We're also going to give them each a rigid body com component that's needed for us to do the physics calculations. Um, and we're also going to put so, uh, a fixed joint component on some of these objects. And I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, and then we have some box colliders for each of these uh, and then our script for controlling them. 
So a fixed joint, if you read Unity's documentation, uh, it says a fixed joint restricts an object's movement to be dependent on another object. So here's the key point about this. The movement we're talking about is dependent upon another object. So what we're saying is if you apply this fixed joint to an object, that means this object is going to rely on the control of another object. So we are kind of somewhat parenting to that object without actually parenting, because as you remember in the last video, you cannot parent a rigid body to another, you cannot put a child rigid body on, on a parent rigid body. So in this case, this isn't doing that, but it's kind of treating it like that. So, uh, and that was one of the issues that we had is we can't just apply you know rigid body after rigid body. There should be one rigid body for the entire object and then you have your colliders as childs or you could have your collider on the same object as the rigid body um, but generally speaking you want to have one rigid body um, so the script really all we're doing again is uh, it's the same as the previous video we have our, our yaw and our throttle horizontal and vertical we're going to add relative torque and add relative force so this is going to apply to the gray cubes um, so Looking at this, what I wanted to point out as well, for, for the objects that have the fixed joint, if I have a fixed joint, I have put a little yellow sphere to indicate this is the component that has the fixed joint. Um, and that's going to be kind of important, and you'll see in just a second. So each of these does have its box collider and a rigid body and the fixed joint. Um, so and these red ones all do, but there's one example where it's actually the opposite. Um, and remember that our gray cubes are actually what we have the script on that does the control for the motion. Um, so in this case, um, the fixed joint, you do have to drag in the object you want it to kind of be dependent on. Um, and for this example, I actually have these two cubes. It's not pointing to cu two cubes, it's pointing to the parent object of those two cubes. So that's why that's saying now. So let's jump back into Unity real quick and take a look at this. Okay, so here we are back in Unity. And I want to point out that this green arrow on the left is the axis with which we're going to rotate everything around. And so up here, we have this cube that's kind of tall. This one actually should spin the fastest. Even remember from the last episode, um, the more, the closer the mass is to the axis of rotation, the faster it's going to spin. So you can have a lot of mass. These are the same weight. All three of these, or actually all five of these objects are the same total mass, but they're just configured differently. Um, but this one that's taller will spin the fastest because most of the mass is closer to the uh, axis of rotation. Um, whereas this cube, you can see there's two, like, you know, a third of it or two thirds of this is spread out further than this one. So this is going to be slower. These should all, in theory, move just as fast, but you'll see that they don't. Um, and then this one here, um, these, these uh, three over here um, are configured a little bit differently. This one is actually going to be, um, each of these is, a th I said, a thousand. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So this is 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. On this one, this is a total length of six meters or six units, however you want to call that. Um, so this is actually, I cheated a bit. I said this is actually 4,000 because this is actually um, a total of two. So this is 1,000, 1,000, uh, and then 2,000 because I gave these half mass. So I actually, this is 4,000 and this is 4,000, but I want to show you uh, in effect why even though they're the same weight, they'll spin at different speeds and this fixed joint will help us kind of demonstrate that. Uh, but you'll see why also fixed joint is not perfect. It's not going to give you everything you need. So let's go ahead and start rotating and see what happens. And as you can see, the one that goes tallest is moving the fastest, but you'll see that they're not all rotating at the same speed in the middle there. Um, and it's kind of, you know, inconsistent. Uh, and I'll kind of explain one of the biggest problems that I see right away, but let's kind of reset here. So the first thing is, is um, these two actually did seem to move pretty closely, the top two there, uh, and that worked out pretty well. But you'll also see that that third one right here um, is not spinning at the same rate. Actually, it seems like it was spinning a little bit faster. And so remember, um, this, for whatever reason, um, the fixed joint, we're saying we're dependent on this. This has a little more control 
than it normally would. This has more influence than it really should. This fixed joint is saying we're going to rely on you to uh, to make our determination on how we should move. Um, and it still does some calculation, but this still has a little bit more control. Now, what I've done here, done down here at the bottom, if you noticed it, it was being pretty weird. Um, this is bad because I have said I'm giving you control, but I'm also making you dependent on these two other cubes here. I put this cube dependent on these two other objects. And as you can see, as we play it, let's instead of moving it forward, I'm actually going to just push it, use thrust, and you'll see that it starts spinning. And because I did that, you see how it's starting to go all sorts of crazy right here. Like the, it's, you know, the object that we're trying to control is saying we want you to be dependent on these two cubes on how they move. Well, that really messes things up. So just remember, if you're going to use fixed joint, make sure that you are uh, applying it appropriately. You want the fixed joint to attach to uh, the object that you want to be uh, dependent on the other object. You don't want to put it on the object you're controlling. So um, a fixed joint should be going on something that you know attaches to what you control. It should not be going uh, on something you're actually controlling directly. So. Um, now, if you notice on this one, uh, these last three over here, um, this one in the middle actually does move a little bit more slowly, and it should. That's the way it should be. And so the same thing, this one here is moving as it should because there's more, uh, these two influencing uh, cubes uh, are exerting their influence pretty normally. There's not much of a difference. Here, it's kind of the same setup as this one. Um, but it's the weight difference here, the, the mass is evenly distributed throughout where is more of the mass is pushed outwards on this one. So this one actually seems fairly normal. So in instances where you're not putting fixed joints, like multiple fixed joints around one object, it actually kind of acts normal when you have one um, in there. So this kind of makes it kind of crazy. And you can see, obviously, don't do it wrong. You're going to get this. Uh, but this last one down here was just another example. Um, this probably isn't going to be accurate as well because you see this is spinning too fast. But this was more of the, the mass is uh, also, I think, 4,000 total. Um, actually, I, made, I think this one is actually 5,000 because these are 4,000 plus the, the 1,000, uh, the half densities at the end. So 500, 500, and then uh, 4,000. And you can see that even that one spins uh, a little bit faster than these other two uh, because the the core of that mass is actually closer to the middle. So anyway, that is it for today. If you guys liked watching this video, go ahead and hit that like button. I thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.